So today I'm fitting the door linings in this um, extension that we're doing on the channel. And when I was fitting it, I thought, well, I might just do a little video on it, of how I fit my door linings. And as we always say, it isn't the only way. It isn't the way you should do it. This is just how I do it. And if you take something from this, one little part of it, and use someone else's method, that's fine, isn't it? So um, if you've got any questions, stick it in the comments and I'll answer them. But I'll go through exactly how I do a door frame, or door lining, sorry, because this is not rebated. This has got separate slam on strips and there's a difference. And I'll show you that difference now. Okay, so this is a fire door lining. And the reason it's a lining and not a frame is because, even though it is technically a frame, mm, a, do a, line, a, a door lining isn't rebated like that. It's just a flat piece of wood. And what you get in the pack, and in this instance, because it's a, a fire door frame, you get this piece of um, rebate, which then, when you put your door thickness on, which is 45 mil, 44 mil, this fixes onto there, and I'll fix that onto there like that. That has to be glued and pinned. Um, we I'll do that with some 16 gauge pins. Um, so that forms a rebate. A door frame is this. And if you can see the light there, it's a preformed rebated piece of timber to form the rebate rather than that being a separate. So that's a door frame. So there we are. Now you know the difference. The first thing we need to do is that when you get certain um, frames and linings like these, you can buy them specifically for certain types of doors or like I did yesterday at Adam's house for him, I he got um, a fire door frame and it wasn't um, trenched like this. This is pre-trenched at set widths for a two foot nine and a two foot six door. That's what this one's trenched for. However, this part here, because of the design of this, because of the width of that corridor around there, the width of that to get the base unit in, the width of that to get the 600 larder cupboard in, and to get this wall in line, because the customer wants that door and frame out, to get that in line so it's like a nice walkthrough rather than a bit of a horrible step. It ended up meaning that this was in effect, it actually works out about a literally a frame's leg, too small for a two foot six. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a two foot three. So two foot six for the metric people is seven six two, and two foot three is six eight six. That's millimeters. I'll work in both, I always have done. So all I've done here is, and if a good way to check if what spacing you need then to allow for your door all the way around, which is, I call it a two pence gap, um, is, or oh, well, that's all I've done anyway, is if you measure from here inside, to inside there and in this instance I think this one was the two foot six one. Oh no sorry that's the one I've just done right I've got ahead of myself you see sorry okay so what we would have originally had was this would have been like that complete head I've cut this off and you'll see on the footage next why I've done that so all I did was I got my tape measure and I measure from there to there and I, I worked out that on this manufacturer of this frame has allowed an extra four mil on top of the width of the door. So instead of 762, what that allowed is, is 766 on the width. Two, pen, two mil either gap, which is where you get your two pence from, because it's about two mil thick. So because I want two foot three, what I've done then is, I've got 686, rounded up to 690, and you can see in the footage now, what I've done is, I've cut the end off my frame that I don't need to give myself a, an actual proper thickness so when I do trench it it goes into there properly and then I've measured my 690 and I've marked with my square the point uh, on the frame where I need it to be and I've used the block of wood I've cut off to do my exact width then what I've done is I've used the um, depth of the rebate or the trenching that's already on the frame and I've set my saw then to the actual depth that required to trench it into the, or rebate it into this head of the frame again at the new position. Once I've done that with um, continuous um, or repeat cuts, shall I say, I then knock it out with a chisel and then fine adjust the base of it so it's all nice and flat with the chisel. And that's my uh, head set then, ready to go. 
All I've done then is I've used my saw to trim off the edges because these edges, this door lining were a bit rough and they didn't sit nice in the re rebates and it would have ended up with a bit of a horrible sort of um, gap uh, where it meets the uh, rebate. So I've gone ahead and done that. So that's where we are now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through putting it all together and getting the correct width before I put it in the hole. What I'm doing now is I'm marking my top slamming strip to the same internal dimension as the head of the frame. And then I've put some holes on it and I'll show you why I'm doing that in the footage next. But then what I've gone ahead and done is I've glued and screwed my uh, head of my frame to the legs, making sure that they're square first. So what you can see there is that mark, that one there, and the one this end there is the same width between here and here. And then what I've done is, I've used a piece of scrap again to mark a width there so I know what the width my um, leg section is and I've drilled a hole in it. Next process, this will all come clear in a minute, is if you mark a line from the top of your frame to Whatever dimension you want, set dimension. Not too high, because you've got to climb over it when you fit your frame. So I'm going to go for 1900. 1900 that side. And the reason for that is when you do put this on, if that wasn't an exact measurement on both sides, and you just go, oh, oh that'll do like that. These measurements won't work out because if you put it on at an angle like that, or like that, exaggerated, it pulls these legs in to try and match your marks. So you have to have a parallel line off the head of your frame, down to your line. And all this is going to do for me is when I put my frame in, it remains perfectly parallel to each other. So when I put it in the hole, and plus the fact when I'm carrying it around, I'm not going to damage the frame or snap, snap in, snapping the glue in the head. So I'll do that, I'll get some, uh, some screws, screw it into there, and the majority of the time, the, any marks that you make on, on this face will be covered by um, architrave anyway. If it's not, it's only a small hole to put a bit of filler on, it's not a massive issue. If this was a stained frame, um, which you don't really get nowadays, I haven't done one for a long time, then I'd do it a different way. I'd put a block on the, out, on, on the inside and screw to it and clamp it in different ways, but I don't need to worry about that. So I'll get some screws, I'll screw that in place. So, I've just got a couple of two inch eights. So, I'll get these on the marks, which are there, so it's the same width all the way down. Get that on the mark, down there. Make sure it's parallel when you put it in, make it easy for yourself. And that's it, because I've got a finished plaster face over there. 
What I can also do is now is this bit will sit against the plaster at the bottom and that'll sort of help you get your framing. Um, and, there's, and that's really it for putting the door frame together. So what I'll move on to now is um, cutting the head of the frame off, which you'll see me do in a minute, and then we'll put it into the hole. Now what I do sometimes is, because I know my opening is a bit wider than my um, external size here, I'll allow a little bit more on my head, so I can use that as my top pattern, if you like, for the head of my frame to get it into the hole. I've already marked on the plaster board up there where my top of my door frame is going to come externally. So I'll measure that now and I'll leave equal amount to either side to get the framing central to that opening. And then uh, we'll go ahead and talk about packing and screwing your frame in place. Right there, top of the moon, we could sit and do nothing. I wish we were both to just fly away. So I measured the uh, height of my frame externally from the top to the bottom. I marked it up there. I've then measured the width and I've got measured to 771. Then what I'm going to do, find the centre of my frame internally, which that mark is there. And then I'll put the equal measurement, 771 in half, 385, 385 and a half, something like that. So I'll mark 385 on there now, from that mark. Check of that, that will do my maths right. Yes, okay. So, got my marks on there now. So what I'll do is I'll square those Square those off like that with a square and I'll cut these off and it leaves, it looks like about a 10, 11 mil gap there. Uh, and it'll put my head of my door down there in the centre of the opening. And then because I've got the bottom strapped as well, the same width, it's easier then to get your legs parallel to your head. Or at least I think so anyway. And again, this is just how I did it. There's loads of different ways. I've seen it done different ways loads of times. But this is how I do. Right, I've popped it up on a bin, because um, I'm too lazy to fetch my trestles out the back. I've got ugh, five or six pairs of trestles. I've even got a big hop up over there, but because you've got stuff on it, I'm just being lazy. I'm trying to get the video done, so I then crack on with everything else I want to do. So all I want to do, I square my mark across there, like that. Square that line down there, like that. Square that line down. And then, I'll saw that off. Right. Put the door frame in place. I haven't done it silly ties because I don't want to start damaging and, and taking all the paper off the plasterboard. So there is a little bit of a gap there, but all I'll do, I'll just make myself some folding wedges, which are just some longish, thin wedges and I'll just tap them into it. And just, like I say, if you put that on the bottom there, because I can, oh, okay, that's not quite parallel. All I can do, give that a bit of a tap. Before I start packing this is, like that, and it, it pulls this one over. So I haven't got to try and do individual legs. And it sort of guarantees more that you can get this exactly parallel. Now, okay, when you start screwing it, because you can, you know, you can still, um, overcome the screw that's in that way if you screw it in that way because you can just pull it 
So you just make sure you pack it first properly and then screw it, which we'll go into in a minute. But that's it in the hole now. I will put a bit of um, DPC on the bottom of there, just underneath the, uh, the frame leg, even though, in honesty, this has already got a DPC in it. It's not a massive deal. Um, but what I've got to do anyway is I've got to break all that out and break all this out. But I'm doing this um, whilst the little one's in, a bit in bed. It's a bit noisy. So I should make up my other frame in there in the same way. And then I'm going to go next door, do a bit of insulating in the ceiling so I'm a bit quieter. Then what I'll do is, so when you see me fixing this, you may see that that is already broken out. So it's a bit disjointed, this video. But I'm trying to do this quietly um, before uh, the little one gets up. So I shall leave this for now. Now this is made up. Do my other one, start in there, and then we'll come back to this when you see that broken out. What I decided to do was, rather than wait until I've done that bit out there, which I haven't done yet. I've just made this frame while I was being a bit quieter. And I decided to show you how to fit this one because this is more realistic than having to make heads of doors up and things. If you were doing this at home, for example, as um, a confident DIYer, then this is what you'd be, you'd be faced with if you're doing a little bit of, you know, petition a wall or something like that. Um, so I thought I'd just show you how I set out. So as I said to you, I've cut, I cut my head of my frame like that, tighten the gap. Just, and then that gives me my parallel, or sorry, my centre in my opening then. I always allow 20 mil or so, maybe a bit less, about 15 mil actually, on my opening's width. But it depends on what frame you're getting, so may I have a look at that first, because, for example, the frame I did yesterday at Adams, he's had a lot thicker door frame, and I would have had to allow a wider um, opening, door opening, but luckily for him, it's, it's new petitions, he hasn't put the petitions up yet. But if I'd have tried to put that frame in this opening, that would have been, wouldn't have been wide enough. So just pay attention to what frame you get as well before you do your opening. That's a bit of a tip for you. So all I do now, as I've already, sorry, I've already said to you, because you've got this bit on the bottom, you can tap that and get it sort of parallel. You can then check with your level, put your level on there. I'll, I'll step back and show you in a minute anyway. But that, at that now, is level. And as you can see, because I've paid a bit of attention to putting my my stud working, that's level as well. So it makes it all a little bit easier. It's a bit difficult when you come to this scenario where you've got it all brickwork everywhere and you have to start making packers up and wedges and I know, yeah, we could, I could have bonded that. and But anyway, I'll get over that. It's not a problem. Um, so all I do now is you can use plastic window packers, which I've got, you know, from sort of one mil, you know, right up to sort of six mil. And I've got a couple of wedge packers as well. I've got those, but what I like to do is I've just made um, an oak table and when I cut the strips off to trim it all to square, I ended up with these sort of thin of different sort of sizes, really, um, different size oak strips. So I've cut it into sort of six inch, six inch length and um, I use these to, to the point where, and then I use those to, to top it up if you like. So let's just say for argument's sake, I'll put that in there like that. Okay, a bit thicker. Put that thicker one in there. No, that's a bit too thick, so that's all I'll do. I'll just use three or four of these, like that, and then I may just use a one mil or two mil out of here then, just to top up. And then I have seen it done where you, you use um, uh, shims, like the Americans use it. I mean, I watch um, Perkins Builder Brothers, and they use a shim, and I keep meaning to make myself one of those Arlo shim makers, whatever they call it, which is make yourself some long wedges, which is a brilliant idea. And then you just use a 16 gauge pinner, put the wedges in, give them a tap, and then put pins in, and then put screws in after. Uh, but they don't seem to screw theirs, they just pin them, so, uh, so there we are. Right, I'll get on with this now. So this is just to show you a bit of a close at what I'm doing with regarding my packers. So I'll pack this either just above, just above like that, my screws. Same down there, just above. You don't want to go too far above because it'll start bellying the framing. You need your packer. I mean, you can drill through your packers if you want, but it makes it a bit more difficult to keep hold of your packers and put your screw pilot hole through them, etc. So I'll just go slightly above. What I generally do to hold the packers, I've done a, um, a clearance hole on my, uh, my hole there, and I'll push the screw through. And when the screw's through, I shall put that and sit it on my screws and then, and then screw it in tight. That's what I'll do. Making sure that I don't do this with my frame by using my six foot level. Now I know you could do this with a laser. I have done it with a laser, 
But there's no point me showing it with a laser when you people at home that want to do this yourself haven't got a laser. So I'm just showing you level. Or you could use a flat piece of timber and a smaller level if you haven't got a six foot. And do it the same way. That's why I'm doing it this way. But yes, I do use my laser. However, I still do like using my six foot level. I just find I can get that millimetre perfect so it doesn't, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm older. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Right then, I'll shut up talking. Let's crack on with it. That's the first leg done then. Um, all I've done here is because I couldn't get a frame exact match to the plasterboard and this CLS I'm using, I've just evened the gap out with a packer against there, like that. And because this is oh, this is level, I've then put and plumb, whatever you want to call it. This is a shout out to Andy Bricklow Worldwide. He picked me up on it last time. Sorry, Andy. I'm trying to do it better. Um, so packer on there. Pack on there. I know this is upright then. Then what I've gone, as I said to you, I've got my little packers. I've put them in here. I'll do top and bottom first. So I've done top. But I'll put another packer in there now. I've held that in place to make sure this leg doesn't move this way. And when, I, when I'm ready to fire that in now, because I know I'm on the correct spacing, I'll put some packers in there as well. So this, this doesn't sort of do this with a leg. Um, even though it won't move much, it might just open this joint up a touch. So I'll pack that. Then I put my packers in. I put my six foot level on, as you saw. Onto there, and then I make sure that my frame is sitting nice and flat. So, when you're screwed in, top and bottom first, as I said, then you pull your middle out to um, to your level. Now, let me just step back a bit. When I was putting my frame together, what I did make sure is if there's any cast at all in my legs, I make sure I do my legs like that way. So, in effect, my legs are doing this exaggerated like that. So, when it when I come to put the frame, it's a lot easier for me because I can fix the top fix the bottom, and then I can wedge out then to get my flat, perfect line. Rather than the other way, I'm having to try and put packers in and guess and screw to a packer to take it out if I put them in this way. So that's another little tip for you. Always make sure you put your frame legs in that way if there's any cast. So then what I've done, I've put, as you saw, I put my screws in. It's hard to hold this at the same time, but that is level and Again, it can't really see it on there, but I've made there's no gap at all on that level. Top to bottom, there's no little gaps where my thumb is there, look. If there is, you just slacken your screws off a toucher, get your little packers, knock like I did on that one, look. Little green packer in there, because there was a tiny gap. Loosen your screws off a little bit, and then put a packer in. So all you do now is, also make sure that, oh, well, you would have seen on the uh, footage as well, it makes you do put your head in level as well. Because what you don't want is your legs sort of up, up and down. And then you can't get your head square. So all you do next, I should put another packer at the bottom there. So I've got my same standoff, my plaster work on this side. Then what you do is, or should I say what you can do, is you can then just level this leg. And that's what you do. However, I'm going to try and show you this now if I can, if I can with one handed, but, and with the space I've got. All you do then is, if you get your level and put it on your leg like that, against your leg, then what you do is, you look here, and I can't do it from this angle, but you look, you take this edge of your level and look at this side of your frame. And then if there's any a twist at all in that wall or this wall here, you make sure your legs go in parallel if you need to. Let's say for argument's sake that you put it into a wall and it's, it's half inch out of level, top to bottom. If you've got a nice gap at the top, at the bottom, but you can't put it in level because it means you're being further in that way. This is the way you do it. You put a level on here and you just eye this line through to that line over there. I'm not, it's a bit tight because you can see I'm trying to stand in this corner. So I can't do it. But I should go around there in a minute and do it that way. But you look this way and you just level across. And then you just tap your frame to suit. But all I'll do now is the same process. I should get, um, I've already pre-drawn my holes and came to sunk them. I've got sunk my screws in. I've already put my screws in ready. I'll do exactly the same. Pack the top, pack the bottom, put my screws in, and then pack out to my level down here. And that's how I do it. Uh, the only little bonus you've got with using um, these, um, get your words out, Rich, these linings. God, that was difficult, wasn't it? These lines is when you put the rebates on, if you are slightly out on your door, you can pull them over a touch, like a millimetre, for example. Because um, what you can do, again, um, I've done it in the past, but not so much there, because I'm happy that I can put them in 
the legs in parallel. But if you're a bit concerned that you're not going to get the legs in exactly the same, like that one, level with this one, in terms of this way, I can't really do, use two hands, but you know what I mean, don't you? Then you have got that little bit of compensation where you can move your, your planted stops on and you can twist it a little bit to match your door. Well, I'm going to try and explain more. Then I'll try, I'll try and explain it by using my hands and it just wasn't working. So I've just cut my planted stops to height, and allowing for the head to go in. So I put my head in first, tight, and then the leg um, bring back to go up to it like that. So what I was saying was if you're a bit concerned that when you put these two legs in, one's that way and one's this way, and you're, you're not you're a bit worried about it, what you can do is when you fix your hinge side and got this one set, obviously you can try and get it as get these as parallel as you can, because that always helps, first off. Um, but when you come to put your door on then, what I always do is, what I have done multiple times in the past, put these, um, get your little, your little combination square, set this to the thickness of the door, allowing for a mill and a half or so, and do yourself a couple of marks down there, this is where the door's going, all the way down, so you know roughly where your door's going to sit, and then get your, your planted stops, and sit these on your marks that you've just done, so that's your door thickness there now. So you sit these in there like that. So this is your hinge side, so always allow at least a mil and a half wider on the hinge side so it doesn't bind when you close your door. So you can get this in, put your head in, put this in, but just put it in in temporary pins so you can take it out. Just put a little pin in there just to hold it. So when you put your door in, especially when you're on your own and doing fire doors because they're heavy, the, the door doesn't fall through. So pin them on temporary to your marks. Then what you do is, you put your hinges on and you swing your door. Now, when you come to close your door, if for argument's sake, let me just, then we're gonna show you this. So if for argument's sake, now you, you've, you're gonna close your door like that. When it sits against this door, if you come on the inside of your door and then look, and the door is sort of sitting in your frame like that, it's touching the bottom or touching the top like that. This is your door now. I oh, know it's not a door but representing a door, sitting against your planted stop. If it's sitting like that or like that, all you can do then is, and this is where you've got a bit of an option to help you out to make it sit nice, is you can move, move you can pin this in place then, you can move it out or move it in. And likewise, you can move your hinges in and out on this side, if you're not happy with your door. But we could just put these on temporary, and put your door in first, and before you chop your hinges in even, if you want need to pull your, your bottom hinge out or your top hinge in, whichever, to make it sit nicer, then you can just chop your hinges into suit then. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. And what I'll try and do is when I fit the door, I'll do it a li little bit more in depth if you want. When I fit the door in the, when I come to the point when I'm putting all the doors and, and, fr and the iron mongery on, because I won't be doing that yet. Because as you can see, it's still the old kitchen. Still needs plastering, so the doors won't go until till the last minute. So I can make sure my door is 100% perfect, because it will move a little bit when you start to skim. I'll get little wedges then, I can look at my door when it goes in the frame, and if it's sitting like that, I can get a little wedge, and I can just tap it into there, to, to, to make sure that it sort of does this, and makes it nice and parallel. So the archives go on when I do my door. Even though I did it a bit different upstairs, because we, we, I was happy, I'd already checked it. I put my door in the hole, and we put the doors back into storage. So I was happy already. So it was a bit different when I did the loft conversion ones upstairs that you would have seen me do. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain is how to do your planted stops. But if, if that's as clear as mud, I'll try to do a little bit more when I put the doors on. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to the like button. Uh, we'd appreciate it. It's, it's good for the channel, people like it. Right then, catch you on the next one.